In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at um, the charge, um, and so the electric field and flux on an infinite plane of charge. Now, it's important to note that the um, we define the plane to be infinite. And it's important that we define the charge to be symmetric, i.e., uniform. So. Uh, let's say the the plane has a charge density of uh, Q over A. Um, it doesn't matter what the Q is, doesn't matter what the area is, that's just arbitrary. Uh, at the minute, anyway, unless you've got a solid example, but you never have an example of an infinite plane. But this is the ideal case, it's an ideal situation of the charge or the flux through a, of, of a surface, charge surface. So to work this out, if we um, take the example of taking a cylinder, um, which goes through our surface, and let's say it has infinite distance from the surface, both top and bottom, and let's call that distance B. Now the end caps will have an area A. It's a uniform cylinder, so the area is going to be the same top and bottom. Now, if you remember from a previous tutorial, which I will link to in the description below on Gauss's law, we should recall that the, um, that the uh, integral of the electric field dot dA is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Now, the charge is, yeah, or the charge Q, um, in this case, is equal to um, charge density sigma times the area. Just rearrange this uh, formula here. So, um, if we now look at the flux, because remember it is actually the flux um, which equals that the electric flux, um, we find the um, the flux on the top on the top cap here is equal. Sorry plus the charge or the flux through the bottom cap plus the charge through the sides sorry the flux through the sides um, is going to equal the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. Now we know the charge is equal to um, sigma a or the charge density times the area over epsilon naught. Now in this case well obviously with a plane an infinite plane the charge through the side is going to equal zero so then we're left with the flux through the top plus the flux through the bottom equals sigma times area over epsilon naught. Now, in this case, we've got two lots of um, area. Um, so we have 2EA, go back to the integral. So we've got two lots of two 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 lots of um, this integral here. So that's going to equal e d a. That's going to equal so that's going to equal e a. That's going to equal e a because we've got a uniform situation. So that we get two e a, and we mustn't forget. Oh no, it's not a vector anymore because we've gone through the dot product. Okay. Um, now, so rearranging that, we find that the electric field is equal to. Um, uh, sigma over 2 epsilon naught because the area cancels. Now, interestingly, if you remember my previous tutorial on Gauss's law, um, we found that um, for a distance away from the sphere, the electric field decreases by the inverse square law of the radius. In this case, however, Note that if we were to do that same graph of electric field against radius, or in this case distance, we would find 
we have a constant relationship of sigma over 2 epsilon naught, which is a constant because it's a uniform plane with a uniform charge density, hence uniform, it's a constant, against 2, which is obviously a constant, and epsilon naught, which is a known constant. So it would literally just be a constant no matter how far away you got from that infinite plane. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have, don't forget to give us a like button. Any comments or questions, post them in the comments box below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.